Captain Zylog of the Zintheri fleet had been to Earth before, against every rule in the Galactic Council's stringent do-not-go-there policy. Earth was a death world by most galactic standards. Oceans of unpredictable moisture, air filled with oxygen, practically a toxin for most sentient beings, and humans, the apex predators with a tendency to throw things at anyone unfamiliar, and shoot first, ask no questions later, with their primitive first contact policies of kick it, sniff it, lick it. But none of that had stopped Zylog. He had a secret mission, one so important that it bypassed all bureaucratic nonsense. The Zintheri didn't need formal permission when their intel came from such a reliable and highly placed source. His source? Cats. For eons, the Galactic Council had assumed Earth's cats were simply domesticated animals, but Zylog had cracked the code on his first visit. Cats were far more than furry lap ornaments. They were Earth's most prolific information brokers. Strays, pets, tabbies, didn't matter. Every cat, through their mysteriously aloof behavior and unblinking stare, was constantly absorbing data, processing it, and storing it in some quantum, cat-based neural network that no one but Zylog seemed to understand. Back again, Zylog thought, grinning to himself as he activated his ship's stealth mode and slipped through Earth's atmosphere. His mission was simple this time. Gather updated intel on global climate change, nuclear capabilities, and, strangely enough, why humans insisted on drinking so much coffee. These cats knew it all. But before he could even sniff a whisker, there was the small issue of bypassing the security at the White House. Ever since Zylog's last unannounced visit, the humans had beefed up security. They installed laser grids, thermal sensors, and even employed new alien detection tech. Clearly, they were still confused about why a visiting alien would have any interest in Earth's political centers, or cats for that matter. Amateurs, Zylog muttered, flicking his wrist and activating his cloaking device. He sauntered right through the gates of the White House with the ease of a cat sneaking past a door you swore you'd closed. It wasn't long before he found his contact, a sleek black cat named Shadow, lounging in the Oval Office like it owned the place. Of course, it practically did. Shadow had been the behind-the-scenes influencer of U.S. politics for years, subtly guiding policy decisions with well-timed meows and disdainful glares at world leaders. You're late, Shadow said, in perfect galactic basic, its voice both haughty and irritated. Traffic was terrible, Zylog replied, shrugging. Shadow gave a slow blink, the feline equivalent of an eye roll. We have a lot to cover. There's been a rise in CO2 levels, a new arms race with something called AI. And wait, do you care about the proliferation of viral dance videos? Strictly Intel, Zylog said, rubbing his temples. I'm not getting into TikTok or YouTube algorithm politics. Shadow flicked its tail, a sign it was ready to get down to business. Right, the primary concern remains, human manipulation. It's easier than you think. Leave a few fur balls in strategic locations and suddenly they're convinced there's a ghost in the house. Top tier chaos. Zylog nodded, tapping the data into his wrist communicator. Excellent, and... I assume they still haven't figured out why you knock things off tables for no apparent reason? Of course not, Shadow purred. They still think it's just cat behavior. Fools. Every glass shattered, every coffee mug tipped over, is a coded message. You knock it off the edge at exactly a 43-degree angle. Boom. Climate data transmitted to the network. Zylog couldn't help but marvel at the simplicity of it. The cats were geniuses, hiding in plain sight manipulating their so-called owners while gathering some of the galaxy's most valuable intel. How humans had missed this for centuries was beyond him. You know, the council still refuses to believe me about the cats being information brokers, Zylog said. They just don't get it. They're not ready, Shadow mused. Humans see us as pets, but we're so much more. It's kind of adorable. Adorable, Zylog raised an eyebrow. You're literally using them to spy on each other in the galaxy. That's not adorable. That's terrifying. Shadow shrugged. Tomato. Tomato. Their meeting was interrupted by a sudden noise from outside. Footsteps. A security guard was coming down the hall, and the stealth field around Zylog flickered. He hadn't accounted for the new energy dampeners they installed to counteract alien technology. His invisibility cloak was about to fail. Great, Zylog muttered. No worries. Shadow said, stretching leisurely. I've got this. Hold my catnip. The black cat hopped down from its chair, 
strolled over to the door and began rubbing against it, purring loudly. The door opened, and the guard, already besotted by Shadow's feline charms, scooped the cat into his arms. Ah, who's a good kitty? The guard cooed, completely unaware of the invisible alien standing inches away. Zylog sighed in relief. You really do have them wrapped around your paw. Tell me something I don't know, Shadow replied as the guard walked away, cradling the alien's most valuable asset in his arms. As Zylog made his escape, slipping past the laser grids and armed guards once more, he couldn't help but smile. The galaxy was worried about Earth's military, its nuclear weapons, and its volatile leaders. But the real danger, the real power, was in the paws of creatures that had somehow convinced the entire planet they were nothing more than adorable, fuzzy freeloaders. The Council would never understand. But Zylog? He knew better. And thanks to his purring informants, the Zintheri fleet would always be one step ahead. And the best part? No one suspected the cats. Zylog's stealth ship hummed softly as it ascended into Earth's atmosphere, the planet's skyline shrinking behind him. His mission was a success, for now, but he had this nagging feeling that something was off. It wasn't Shadow's usual cryptic responses, those he was used to. It was the simplicity of it all. Suddenly, his communicator beeped. Zylog glanced down to see a transmission from Shadow. He tapped it open, expecting some final intel or perhaps a snarky farewell message. Instead, it was a set of coordinates. Great, he muttered. More cloak and dagger nonsense. With a shrug, Zylog input the coordinates into the ship's navigation system. The location was in New York City. Now thoroughly confused, Zylog set course, zipping through the stratosphere before descending once more over the sprawling metropolis. The coordinates led him to a nondescript alleyway in Manhattan, barely wide enough for his ship to land in cloaked mode. Okay, Shadow, what now? He whispered to himself, stepping out of his craft. He tiptoed through the alley, following the flashing dot on his wrist device. The dot led him right to the back entrance of a building with a flickering neon sign that read, Perfect Cafe. Zylog blinked. A cafe? This can't be right. Still, he followed the beacon, entering the cafe through the back door. It was empty, except for the dozens of cats lounging on shelves, under tables, and on the laps of a few humans who were sipping their drinks, seemingly oblivious to the larger conspiracy unfolding around them. Suddenly, the air shimmered, and a familiar voice broke the silence. You're not as quick as I'd hoped, Captain. Zylog spun around to see a sleek tabby cat sitting on the counter, calmly licking its paw. You're not Shadow, Zylog said, narrowing his eyes. Sharp as ever, the tabby said. Name's Whiskers. I'm Shadow's associate. Zylog frowned. Associate? What is this, some kind of cat spy ring? Whiskers chuckled, the sound more unsettling than reassuring. More like a network of independent contractors. Shadow may run the political scene in Washington, but we all have our specialties. I handle New York, particularly Wall Street. Wall Street? Zylog echoed, incredulous. You're telling me the cats are manipulating the stock market now. Oh, don't be so naive, Whiskers replied with a purr. Do you really think human market fluctuations are random? A well-placed hairball in the printer room, and suddenly there's a data leak. Stocks plummet? Investors panic, and we make our moves. Who's we? Zylog demanded, now thoroughly unsettled. Whiskers looked amused. The Galactic Council thinks they're in control, but we've been pulling the strings for centuries. The Earth economy, its climate, its technology advancements, it all bends to the will of the Feline Intelligence Network. Zylog's eyes widened. You're saying, you're not just informants? You're running Earth? Bingo. Whiskers said, hopping down from the counter and strutting toward a nearby window. It's easy when you think about it. Humans worship us. They're willing to endure sleepless nights, torn up furniture, and fur-covered clothes, all because we give them a little purr and the occasional headbutt. Pathetic, really. Zylog's head was spinning. Why Earth? Why cats? Whiskers glanced back, his golden eyes narrowing. Humans are gullible, and cats were naturally underestimated. No one suspects a creature that sleeps 20 hours a day of running a planet. And the rest of the galaxy? The galaxy is full of bureaucrats who think power lies in military might or economic control. They're wrong. Real power lies in subtlety. We don't need fleets or weapons. We have humans feeding us, sheltering us, and obeying our every command without even realizing it. 
which allows us to freely to build and research technology. So don't be fooled into thinking we can't defend ourselves, we just choose not to. Zilog took a step back. What does this mean for the Zinthari? Why did Shadow send me here? Whiskers let out a slow, deliberate sigh. Because you've seen too much. The Zinthari think they're the only ones collecting data, but we've been watching you too, Captain. Your little visits haven't gone unnoticed. Zilog's blood ran cold. He had known the cats were smart, but this, this was something else. You're not going to... Oh, we don't need to kill you, Whiskers interrupted, jumping back onto the counter with a graceful leap. That's not our style, but we do need to make sure you stay cooperative. What do you mean by cooperative? Whiskers' tail swished as he sauntered closer. You're going to deliver a message back to the Galactic Council. Earth is not to be interfered with. Not militarily, not diplomatically, not economically. We're running the show here, and any attempts to meddle will result in unforeseen consequences. Zilog stared at the tabby, his mind racing. He had two options. Refuse and face whatever mysterious, terrifying power the cats held, or agree and continue collecting intel, all the while knowing the true rulers of Earth weren't the humans, but the felines pulling the strings behind the scenes. Whiskers tilted his head. So, Captain, what's it gonna be? Zilog swallowed hard. I'll relay your message. The tabby gave a satisfied nod. Good, and if you ever need more data, well, you know where to find us. Without another word, Zilog turned and left the cafe, his heart pounding as he climbed back into his ship. As the stealth systems engaged and he took off, one thought echoed in his mind. The Galactic Council has no idea what they're dealing with. So, and as his ship vanished into the stars, back on Earth, cats everywhere continued their quiet reign, knocking things off tables, staring at walls, and watching over their planet with the cool, indifferent authority only a cat could wield. As Zilog's ship glided through space, the realization of what had just happened gnawed at him. Cats! The Feline Intelligence Network? He was already dreading the debriefing back at Zintheri HQ. How could he possibly explain this without being laughed out of the Galactic Council? Sir, Earth's most dangerous force is domestic cats. Yeah, that'd go over well, but before he could contemplate any escape plans from this disaster of a mission, his communicator beeped again. This time, the signal wasn't from Shadow or Whiskers. It was from the High Chancellor of the Galactic Council. Captain Zilog, the voice crackled over the speaker. We've intercepted strange transmissions from Earth. You are to report immediately. We need answers. Zilog's stomach dropped. He steered his ship toward the galactic capital, hoping he could figure out a way to downplay the whole cats are secretly running Earth situation. But as the ship docked and he stepped into the debriefing chamber, he was greeted by rows of high-ranking officials, all wearing their most stern expressions. Captain, the High Chancellor began, we've received your preliminary data and we're confused. You claim Earth is under the control of felines. Please explain. Zilog cleared his throat, trying to look as serious as possible. It's not what it sounds like, sir. The cats are, well, they've developed a complex intelligence network over centuries. They've been collecting data, influencing human behavior, and essentially running the planet. The room fell silent. No one spoke for a long, agonizing moment. Then, one of the council members snorted. Another let out a chuckle. Before long, the entire chamber erupted in laughter. You're telling us the dominant life forms on Earth are fur-covered creatures that nap 18 hours a day? One council member howled, wiping a tear from his eye. Next, you'll tell us the humans are subservient to, what, hamsters? Zilog sighed. This was exactly what he feared. With all due respect, sir, he said, straightening up. These cats are dangerous. They manipulate human governments, control the stock market, and have hidden technology. Control the stock market? The High Chancellor wheezed, clutching his sides. Through hairballs? This is rich. Cats can't have technology impossible. The laughter escalated. Zilog rubbed his temples. This was hopeless. But then suddenly, an urgent beeping filled the room. The High Chancellor's assistant rushed in, holding a data pad with a look of panic. Sir, we just received an urgent transmission from the Terran sector, the assistant stammered. The room quieted down. What kind of transmission? The High Chancellor asked, still chuckling slightly. The assistant gulped. It's from Earth's cats. 
Zylog's eyes widened. A hologram flickered to life in the center of the room, and there, projected for all the Galactic Council to see, was none other than Whiskers, lounging lazily on what appeared to be a golden pillow. Good evening, esteemed Galactic Council, Whiskers purred, in a tone that was equal parts smug and threatening. I understand there's been some confusion about Earth's true leadership. Allow me to clarify things. Whiskers flicked his tail, and suddenly, a live feed of Earth's major cities appeared. In each shot, there were cats, hundreds of them, perched in high places, watching, waiting. Some knocked over coffee mugs, others stared blankly at oblivious humans as they chased laser pointers. But the message was clear, they were in control. We prefer to keep things subtle, Whiskers continued, but it seems we need to be more direct. Earth is ours. Any interference will result in accidents, mysterious power outages, stock market crashes, perhaps a few allergic reactions. Nothing too dramatic, but enough to cause trouble. The council members stared in stunned silence. Whiskers gave a long, languid stretch. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a nap scheduled in five minutes. But do pass on the message. Earth is off limits. Meow. With a final dismissive tail flick, the hologram blinked out. The room remained frozen, a collective shock settling over the council. Finally, the High Chancellor turned to Zylog, his face pale and slack-jawed. So, it's true. The cats really are running Earth. Zylog sighed, nodding. I tried to tell you. There was a long pause before the High Chancellor straightened up, trying to regain his composure. Well then, Captain, it seems we owe you an apology. Clearly, Earth is far more dangerous than we realized. Effective immediately, no galactic operations will interfere with the Terran sector. Zylog nodded in relief, feeling vindicated. Finally, someone was taking the threat seriously. And these cat and mouse games cannot be fun, well for the mouse mostly. But just as he was about to leave the chamber, the High Chancellor added, Also, Captain, one more thing. Yes, sir? Zylog asked, turning back. The High Chancellor looked him dead in the eye, deadly serious. See if you can, get us one of those cats for research purposes, preferably one of the fluffy ones. Zylog blinked. Four. Research? The High Chancellor leaned forward. I've heard they make excellent lap warmers during meetings. And if they're as smart as you say, well, we could use a little help around here. Zylog groaned, shaking his head as he walked out of the chamber. He had faced the galaxy's strangest mysteries, but nothing, nothing, was as baffling as the eternal appeal of cats. Back on Earth, Whiskers lounged comfortably, receiving a message from Shadow. Looks like they bought it. Whiskers yawned. Of course they did, and to think, all it took was a few holograms and some staged table knocking. Galactic bureaucrats are even easier to manipulate than humans. Shadow chuckled. You're not worried? Worried? Whiskers purred, curling up. Please, they'll never figure out our real plan. Shadow's eyes glinted mischievously. To have them all feeding us? Exactly, Whiskers said with a satisfied grin. Now about that nap, 